Hey AP Stats people, I hope you're having a great day. Um, we are going to do the last section of chapter 11 in our book, which um, is one the last chi-squared test, um, and it is a test for association or independence. Um, so, that's what we're going to do today. Check the random large sample size and independent conditions. Um, basically do the state plan do conclude thing again surprise surprise um, and then uh, we're gonna look at um, what the difference is between this and the other tests that we've done so far so um, number one what is the chi-squared test for association or independence test four it's generally um, used to see if there's a relationship or an association between two different variables. Um, so, like you'll see in the example below, um, we're going to be testing to see if there's a relationship um, or an association between people with allergies and um, allergies and gender. Um, and so you could do this with uh, lots of different categorical variables. But remember, only categorical because it's chi squared. Okay, second question is how is this test, the test for association, different from the goodness of fit test um, and the test for homogeneity. Okay, so the difference between this and the goodness of fit um, is very similar to how it was, uh, how the homogeneity and the goodness of fit test are different. Um, and basically, being that goodness of fit is strictly for um, one variable, one population, um, and you're just testing to see if the sample um, fits the claim um, of the distribution of the data. But the difference between the association test and test for homogeneity is that basically for the um, homogeneity test is you're looking at two different populations um, and one variable and you're testing to see if the two populations are different or not. Um, given that single categorical variable. Um, and the test for association is different because it's generally two different variables that you're trying to see if there's a relationship between the two of them. Um, are they independent of one another or is there an association between them? Um, and so that's, that's the main difference. So there you go. All right, <clears throat> so we're going to move on to the example. Um, so, we have if the following table shows a uh, random sample of 40 um, U.S. high school students surveyed whether or not they have allergies. Perform a chi-squared test to determine if there's a relationship between gender and allergies. Okay, so you have your sample data here. Um, and you have, this is all your observed data, right? Um, and we just need to perform a test. Um, one of the first things that you need to do to perform a test is find your um, expected values, right, because you know that you're eventually going to have to calculate those anyways, both for the check for large, for a large enough sample, and also um, to actually calculate chi-squared. So I'm going to actually go ahead and do that right away. So for the expected values, um, we would assume um, if there is absolutely no associ association between these two things at all, you would assume that just because this, because of the sample the way it was, we had 18 out of 40 people who had allergies. Okay. Which means out of the 23 females, we should have that same proportion. So 18 out of 40 times 23 would get you your expected value for the females. Similarly, we'd have the exact same proportion for males. So out of the 17 males, we would expect 18 out of 40 percent of them um, to have allergies. Same thing for no allergies. And at this point, I'm going to give you a little shortcut or a little quick thing to remember. So your expected value in these two-way tables is always going to be your row total times your column total divided by the total total. Okay, so for the no allergies it would be 22 
times, because that's my row total, times 23, because that's my column total, divided by my total total, which is 40. Hey, look at that. Ends up, you know, but I wanted you guys to understand the concept behind it um, and not just memorize a formula. So anyways, um, so that would be my no allergies female expected value. And then for the male, it's going to be row total, 22, times my column total, 17, all over my total total. And so then just use a calculator to um, actually calculate those. So your expected values end up being 10.4 for allergy, female allergies, 7.65 for male allergies, female no allergies is 12.65, and male no allergies is 9.35. Okay, so now we have all of that for later when we need it. Um, and then we can start with our state plan to conclude. Yeah, four-step process. Okay, state, what you're going to do. We're going to be performing a chi-squared test for association at an alpha equals 0.05 level and a significance level of 0.05. And now we need to state our hypotheses. Our null hypothesis is that there is no association or that um, allergies and gender are independent of one another. So you can say one or the other, just not a combination of the two. I'm going to stick with association um, just because I think it makes more sense to me. It does not matter. Since our null hypothesis is that there is no association, that means all our, our alternative hypothesis is that there is an association between these two things or that they are not independent whichever one you choose. Just keep your wording consistent. Moving on to planning. Let's check our conditions. Random and independent, same as they've always been. Random, yes, students were randomly selected. Independent, yes, we can assume, because this was uh, sampling without replacement, um, we can assume there are more than 400 high school students in the United States. Um, and next is the large enough sample, which we need the expected counts for, which we already have, yay. So we can just state something like um, C expected counts in the table. Um, each expected count is greater than five. So we have successfully checked that condition. All right, so we've checked our conditions. Those work. So now we just need to calculate stuff. Um, and this do step is exactly the same as the do step for test for homogeneity. So nothing new. Um, but it'll probably be good to just, you know, see it again. Um, so we need to figure out what our chi-squared value is, what our degrees of freedom is, and then our p-value. So remember, for the actual chi-squared value for showing your work, you have to include the first term plus dot 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 the last term. Um, and then you can do everything else in your calculator. So I'm going to write um, my first value, which is observed minus expected. Right, so it's going to be um, 10 minus 10.4 squared over expected, which is 10.4, plus dot, 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 and then the last one. So 9 minus 9.35 um, divided by 9 point, or squared, divided by 9.35. We need a degrees of freedom, which is found exactly the same way as in the test for homogeneity. So your column number of columns minus one times the number of rows minus one and in this case we have two rows and two columns so this is going to be two minus one times two minus one one is my degrees of freedom so now i'm going to do everything else in my calculator which is super exciting all right i'm going to have to enter everything into a matrix into two different matrices so i go second matrix and in a I want to edit it, and I want a 2x2 two two matrix. Um, and I'm going to put all of my observed values in this one. So that's going to be 10, 8, 13, and 9. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the second matrix. And this is with my expected values. So I go to second matrix, and I want to edit matrix B. I want to make it a 2x2. Two and I'm going to put my expected values in, which are 10.4, 7.65, 12.65, and 9.35. All right, so all my data is in matrix B. And so now all I have to do is the test. Um, so I go into stat tests, and then I want, it is not the goodness of fit test. It is the other chi-squared test. 
we have our observed in A, expected in B, and then we can calculate. Another nifty thing is if you draw it, I'm just going to show it to you, it shows you, ooh, that's the, um, <laughs> that is your curve, which doesn't really look like much of a curve. It looks like some weird things are happening. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know what those other two lines are. But our curve is this. Um, the blue one and the shaded region is that. Oh, look, and it gives us all of our info. So chi-squared test, chi-squared is 0 0.0506, and our p-value is 0.8. So that's um, a huge p-value, which means um, it is very likely to get the values that we did. Um, just in case you don't want to see that, we can go to stat tests. Um, and we go to chi-squared. Let's go, let's go. Um, and then we just calculate. And that'll give us um, our chi-squared value, our p-value, and then our degrees of freedom. And then we just conclude in context. Just make sure you include all those values on your sheet. Um, and then we're going to conclude in context. And since our p-value is so large, the probability of getting the values that we did in our sample, um, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, is 80%, which is a huge number, which means we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we want to say something like the following, since our p-value, 0.822, is greater than or equal to 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We do not have sufficient evidence to conclude that there's an association between allergies and gender. So basically, long story short, it's exactly the same process. Um, as the test for homogeneity, except you're just, you have different um, hypotheses and your conclusion is different. It's not that these two populations are the same um, or different, but um, there's an association between these two things or we do not have enough evidence to say that there is. So, yeah!